All right, I'm going to show you a really cool upscaling workflow here, and it's going to have some other tips and tricks in here. So even if you've seen me build a graph before, uh, I think you're going to learn something here. I think this is a really great build and requires a uh, node package called the impact pack. So if you go into your manager here under install custom nodes, you'll see it right here. Now, if you don't want to use the manager or you don't have the manager uh, that is available over on GitHub as well right here. And if you want it, you can just go code copy. And then I mistakenly said this a last video, um, you'll use git clone, not git fetch. And you just do that in the custom nodes directory of comfy and it will install it for you. And once you've got that installed, we can get down to making a graph again. Uh, you've seen me do this before. You're going to learn something because there's a few tricks in here uh, that I haven't seen anybody else talk about. So I think you're going to find these entertaining. Uh, first of all, we're going to use a different model today. Uh, we're going to use an anime model, one of the waifu models. I know you're thinking, there's waifu models? Uh, well, yes, there are. There's a, there's a couple. Um, and we're going to use one called Soap Mix. And I'm going to use it only because it allows me to demonstrate this in a very easy way. Uh, and I thought that this kind of was helpful. Uh, so go ahead and load a checkpoint. So we're going to add node, go to loaders, and load checkpoint. And go ahead and pick your uh, model of choice. There we go. And now this model is a not safe for work model, but of course we're not going to be prompting it that way. So just be aware that some of these models, uh, waifu, obviously it's a kind of a fake Japanese word. I should give you an idea. Uh, it's uh, producing some very playful images. Be, be careful there. All right. So a couple of things here, that are going to be very interesting. We're going to use a thing called a pipe. And it's one of the things that comes with the impact pack. And it's probably, I'd say one of the two most important parts of the impact pack for me uh, to use it. Uh, you just will go to add node impact pack pipe. And then you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones. We want the two basic pipe. And what that allows you to do is basically take all of this stuff here that you'd normally be dragging around and output it as a single line, which is pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and hook these up. And then we're going to go ahead and do our real quick prompt. So we'll bring our clip down here and we'll enter a text encoder. This will be our positive. So we'll color this one green. And then we'll introduce one more here. And if again, if you hold down your shift key when you paste, it will keep all the connections in place for you. So we'll just go ahead and make that one red. And nice to have some texture. We'll plop in place here. A photo of a woman with uh, light blue hair. Uh, let's do a pink t-shirt with a print. With print. Let's do floral print. By the way, if uh, well, they can spell. Uh, if you want to in here, this is kind of fun. If you put the curly braces first, the curly brackets, do pink, blue, uh, red, and then close curly braces, you'll find that you can get a variable uh, in here that will randomly pick one of those three options or more. And you can do this in numerous places. So you could say jean shorts or skirt or dress or what have you and make this all happen. I will warn you though, that if you do this every single time you run a, a queue, as you would expect, it's gonna come all the way back and reevaluate this. If you're trying to troubleshoot a workflow and you don't want to continue to rebuild the, the latency every single time, uh, then don't do this. So we're gonna kind of skip it, but I did wanna show you, you can do that here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our pipe, bring it over a little bit farther and we'll put our positive in place and our negative in place and, and we'll put a, cartoon down here because that's what I think of the negative prompt for this and shopping at uh, Walmart yeah shopping at Walmart so you have to probably give it some interesting background is what I'm hoping for there so that's it now we have this big pipe and we can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it so what do we do okay so what I'm going to do is I want to I'm going to put this into a case sampler right away we want to go ahead and start our process uh, so let's go ahead and search for case sampler but you'll notice that we want one that has a pipe so we'll see here impact case sampler basic pipe. So if we look at that, now we have one that just takes one line and that's it. So now we can leave all this other stuff around and we can go into another place and be working on our graph and only have one line leading down. That's it. So uh, we do want a latent image here. So let's go ahead and grab a latent image. So delatent. Now, another little cool trick that a lot of people don't know, um, if you're trying to do math in here and you're like, well, okay, I need these divided by 64, uh, but I'm not really sure what the next iteration would be. You can actually just do it here. So you 64 times 19, for example, uh, and I'll go ahead and do the math. Uh, so if you're trying to figure out what that is and you're, you're busting your brain trying to do some math or you're writing numbers down, you can actually just do it right in here. So that's kind of handy. 
And I'm going to go ahead and set these to go ahead and change these to fixed here and just use a seed of one just so that it doesn't, again, redo this one every single time. OK, now we don't necessarily need to use the pipe that comes out of this right away, uh, but we do want to actually do our standard uh, operation here, which is to decode it and see what we made. VAE up here. Speaking of VAE, um, the VAE that comes with this uh, checkpoint is not very good. So let's just go ahead and add one. So we'll add a node, a loader, add a VAE, and we'll pick, um, we'll just grab the standard pruned version here of this one and plug it into the pipe. And that's really nice because we just plug it in up here and it carries it through the rest of the process and we're basically done. Uh, so we can go ahead and preview this image. We'll put it up here somewhere. And I think that looks pretty good. Nice, simple graph. And again, if we save this off, we can load this out every time and start from here. And there we go. Doesn't look like Walmart to me, but we'll we'll run with it. She's shopping, at least we got points for that. I do want this to be a little bit higher quality. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and change my sampler to one that I, I prefer. Uh, CFG, I prefer closer to six and a half, just personally, and I want my step count to be much higher. I so 40, which is pretty, pretty aggressive. And again, we do want to keep the denoise at one because we're starting with an empty latent and we want to obviously denoise the whole thing. So let's do this again. Okay, that looks good. All right, and don't worry if it's not amazing. It's that's not really the goal here. You'll see as we as we continue onward, it'll get much better. Okay, so now we want to upscale this. And you can see that we're at our maximum size here, which is the one that we, we asked for, this 304 by 512. And I want to go up bigger than that. And uh, I can do that right from here. Again, one of the other things that impact are these upscalers. So if we go right click, add node, act under upscale, you see we have all kinds of them in here. Um, but I, one I'm looking for right here is the iterative upscale latent. And this is super powerful. Um, I just really think this is one of the greatest nodes in here so far uh, that has a specific, I'll say, general use. And what it's going to do is well, basically we pick our upscale factor. Let's just use two as an example. And what it's going to do is it's going to go from 100% to 200%, but it's not going to do it in a single jump. It's going to do it over the course of three jumps. So it's it's the equivalent of basically baking three of these together and going step to step to step, uh, which obviously is a whole lot of noodles laying around. Uh, so this is really cool. So we can get to 200% and we can do it. Uh, let's say we want to we want to do it in tenths. We want to do you know 110% upscale and then 120% upscale based on that result and so on and so forth. Now, 10 steps is a bit much, and I'm actually going to stick with the 150% uh, for this demo. I think that's plenty. All right. So what are these other things here? And that's uh, obviously, you know, the latent's going to come out here and we're just going to decode it and make an image. So that part's not super exciting as this part is actually very cool. So the upscaler part here, we need to give it a provider. And this is one of those strange things in Comfy is we normally see Kind of the the noodles the process follows the noodle like we don't ever go backward in this case we will it's gonna it's called a provider so anytime you see a provider um, that means that it's actually going to be processed every single time we iterate so if we pull this out here you'll see it'll pop it out and we have one called pixel k sampler uh k sample upscaler provider pipe well, these are getting long words here and you can see it takes the basic pipe just like we have up here. So we can go and grab that. Actually, we can grab it from here too because it just comes out the other side of this one. Uh, so it doesn't, it isn't as long of a trip um, or you can just drag it down from top. It doesn't matter. But it's nice that uh, it's provided through some of these controllers. Like for example, this one does not have the pipe on it. And there's some options here. Uh, this one is an upscale model uh, optional. Uh, so if you have your favorite upscaler, like you prefer one of the ultra sharps or you have one that adds skin textures or something like that, you can feel free to use that here if you would like. Um, I'm not going to use one because there is one built into this uh, provider and it is, I think, at two times and it works very quickly. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the one that's in there since I really don't care. Um, I am going to up my steps, though, to say 30 uh, just because I want a little bit better result here. And uh, what would be ideal is because I'm going to take three different steps to get to 150 is if I could start with, say, a pretty aggressive noise and then get smaller and smaller with my denoise value as I go. Now, obviously, one is too much, but I could start with, say, like 30. But by the time I'm done, I'd like to be barely denoising it. Can I do that? And you can. That's what this hook optional is here. So if we pull this out, there's two versions of here. 
Uh, there's a CFG scheduler and a denoise scheduler. So let's start with this one first. And you can see that now I'm going to use the word target is the way to remember this. This is what we want to get to. So say we're going to get to a point one, which is obviously barely changing anything. And we started at point three. That means as we go over each one of these iterations, we approach this value. Uh, so that's pretty simple. And there are another options for schedule for iteration. It's set to simple and there aren't any more. So we'll leave that. And if we drag this out, go over here, if we drag this out now, we get to CFG schedule, and this is the same thing. We have a target CFG. So if we put this higher, let's say 13, for example, where we really don't want uh, the image wandering around. We want it strict to the prompt, uh, but we want that to happen near the end of these iterations. But at the beginning, maybe, maybe six and a half is fine. Uh, well, I want both of these things. And if you see when I hook one up, the other one is dropped. There's actually a great little addition here. If we pull this out, and it's called the um, hook combine, pixel K sample hook combine. That allows you to bring in both of these things. So we can have both a CFG and a noise. Now these are optional, obviously. So if you don't want to use these, don't have to, uh, but I think this is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and change my sampler here as well, just to maintain consistency. I'm going to change this to fixed. Uh, again, I'm going to change it to a different seed than the one up here. Um, if you use the same seed, over and over again, uh, I tend to think that things get a little bit contrasty and it may just be my imagination, but I'm gonna go with it. And I'm gonna change the color of all of these just because they're standing together uh, to something. So I kind of see they're together. And we'll do this one here too. These are all the same uh, kind of step in the process. Let's just change the color here so we can kind of see what we're doing. I'll right, we'll go ahead and decode this one, code here. We need our VAE again, and we're going to need this all the time. It's one of those things we're going to be dragging around with us. So I may want to do is just drag it from up top here and keep it handy. Um, let's just do it from here, I guess. Bring it down here, and we'll create a reroute node, which allows us to hook it to a bunch of stuff. We're going to use it a lot down here, so I'm just going to have it handy. Uh, so reroute, by the way, has two modes. You can do it this way, or you can change it to vertical, um, which in this case might be more interesting if we were working our way down, but um, I'm not going to do it that way because I'm used to seeing it this way. So let's just do that. And then we need a preview here. Put that somewhere up here. So it's kind of the similar thing and we'll change its color as well. So we can kind of keep track of what's doing what. Make sure everybody is hooked up here. Again, we're not using this um, model, uh, an upscale model. You could if you'd like, but again, I don't care to at this point. So again, just to kind of cover what we're doing real quick, it's just going to iterate through three times each time going to this provider and asking it, what are the settings I'm supposed to be using? And it's going to be, again, using these schedules here for the denoiser and the CFG every time we iterate. Because we have it set to fixed, we don't have to go all the way back to this node now. We just continue onward. You can see here, it's showing you the number of steps and then the amount we have scaled it up through each time. And there we go. I guess this one should probably be light blue as well. All right, now let's uh, let's show you one other little trick here uh, that I think is pretty interesting. And and if you don't like the detail here, you think we lost some stuff, obviously go ahead and play with the noise and, and so on for all these settings. You can even just sever this and uh, see if you prefer that better. It's just this operation is what I want you to kind of get used to seeing. Uh, and again, play with the settings to do what you want to do. I'm just showing you how it works. Okay, so let's do one more, uh, but we're going to do kind of a weird, a weird little thing here. Uh, we're going to do it kind of an image to image at this point. Instead of using this latent, we're going to do the same thing. But I think the latent uh, later in the game gets a little weird. <laughs> so a little unpredictable isn't a good thing usually. Uh, so let's do it just a different method here. And so we're going to do an iterative upscale. So we're going to add node impact. Okay, we're going to go to the upscale. We're going to grab the image one. So the image one is asking for an image, obviously. So let's just feed that right in here. So we're going to continue uh, with this, whatever this image was here, we'll just be pumped into here. And again, our upscale factor, we'll just leave this the same. Um, and I want to show you a cute little trick here. So I, obviously I'm just going to upscale this for image to image, but I want to show you one other interesting part of this um, because this is obviously it's almost the exact same thing. In fact, we can use the 
exact same upscaler here and we can use the same VAE and we'd be done. I mean, that's, that's really that simple. But let's, uh, let's complicate things a little bit here because I think there's a cool toy or methodology, I should say. I can bring this, this pipe that came down here, I can bring it down again. And here I can go from basic pipe. So basically it turns it back into all the individual connectors. I wanna show you something you can do with the prompt that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're gonna actually concatenate additional words onto the prompt for this last upscale step, which is I think kind of cool. So we have to go through basically the same process we did before where we're gonna sample everything, but we don't want to use the pipe version of this. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I want to take these and we're gonna type in uh, pixel. This is a, a different upscaler here. We can see that there's a pixel sample upscaler and then a pipe version. So we're gonna use this version here. And it, again, it offers the upscaler. So we're gonna do a model, AE, negative. And if we wanna use these same hook options here, we can go ahead and hook those up. And again, if you wanna use your own model, you can as well. Um, and you may get better results, but again, I don't mind the one that's in here. Uh, but I mean, I can show you how to do that real quick. You just drag it out, choose whatever upscale model you want. Here we'll use Swin, which is the default, uh, and you're done. I mean, it's that simple. But what I want to do here is I want to insert or concatenate uh, two prompts together. So let's just go ahead and grab this prompt box up here. I just hold down my Alt key when I grab that by the way, and it'll duplicate it. You don't have to right click and choose clone or any of that. And we're going to put something in here. Let's, uh, what color hair does she have? She has blue hair. Let's go with purple, uh, purple hair. Another little trick here too, is if you highlight something and you hold down control and up arrow, you can increase or decrease its weight. Uh, this is the same thing as automatic 1111 in case you didn't know that also works that way. So I have this, but I want to put it in there. How do I do it? If you drag this positive out, it'll suggest it to you. So we have concat and combine. So I'm just going to grab combine uh, because I really don't care about the ordering in this specific instance. So we'll put our positive in here and we'll put our positioning in here and we will need to connect the clip to this side. So we have kind of this wonky, wonky thing going on here. My OCD is triggering. We don't actually have to leave that one expanded because it doesn't have any options. There we go. That's better-ish. <laughs> and we'll uh, up our count here to like 40 or something like that. Be consistent with with our samples. You don't need to be, but again, uh, if you get a surprise and you wonder why, it's probably happening somewhere in that route uh, area. We'll use a two here and we'll set this to fixed. And then again, we have our upscaler. We're just gonna pass it right in here. AE again, because we may be using that. And then again, out the other side, we'll pop um, our preview. Well, I actually use a save this time so we can save it to our hard drive and they should be similar. In fact, if we use the same noise as this one here, uh, which we are by dumb luck, uh, then we'll have uh, hopefully a very similar image. Now we did change obviously the, the size of the tokens that we're sending over. So we may get a different image, but um, hopefully it will be what we want it to be, or at least remotely close. And again, we could color all these uh, for consistency sake, which I'll do super fast, just to be, uh, if I want to save this and use it again and again and again, then this way they all kind of have the same thing going on and I don't always have to correct myself when I start. It only takes a second to do it the right way. And we see it's changed quite a bit there, but we did get our wish when we got some purple hair out of it. So we could probably look at the denoising here and uh, sure enough, uh, that's a part of the problem. Um, although it started at one, it obviously got all the way down to the target here of point one, but uh, it did have a chance to really kind of do some damage to the image. So if we start at point three here, like the other one, they should end up closer together. And there we go. So uh, really kind of a nice option to go back and modify the image slightly. Um, we won't expect any gigantic changes here, but that's pretty cool. Obviously we can increment our seed here and get a completely different image. We go all the way back to the very first K sampler here. Uh, and uh, then obviously these noises will obviously influence what's happening through the rest of the model. Uh, but whatever happens at the end here, purple hair is going to be added to the model for this last one. But there you go, pretty simple graph um, using again, the pipe. I can walk through it very quickly again, but use the basic two pipe. 
and bring it down to your, your samplers. Uh, they, again, there are piped versions of samplers, and then there are the non-piped, the normal ones. And then when you're using these iterative upscalers, this is the number of iterations it will take to get to this scale factor. And on each iteration, it will use the pipe provider. And then again, you have some hook options here if you want those. Um, otherwise, those are optional. And again, the model, if you have a custom model you want to use, you can hook that up as well. And you can use it in multiple locations like this. Uh, and you can take the pipe and tear it apart if you need to get to the little in itty bitty parts inside of it there like we did here where we concatenate it in another prompt. Then we use the combination for the conditioning here uh, so we can kind of bring everything together. And then we did the same thing again. We went through another iterator with another provider. We could use the exact same provider, uh, but I did want to show this concatenation here. So uh, we did use another one. Uh, but we can certainly use the same one over and over again. But anyway, there you go. That's an upscale option for you. There are obviously a great many different upscale nodes available, but I love this iterative one. I think it uh, solves the problem of trying to leap too quickly into a large scale instead of taking an iteration or getting there slowly. So a uh, big fan of this one. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.